Uh, morning, everybody. This is the sixth episode of We Are Food People. Today, I'm joined by uh, Glenn Ferguson from CK Restaurants, uh, Everett Fieldgate from Costa Coffee, and Henry Saliba from Young Brands. Um, all very, very experienced in the property and development side of the restaurant space, and was really interested to get everybody on a Zoom call this morning to figure out what they think the future of restaurants would be from a real estate and development perspective. So I've got a few questions that I'll ask this morning. And uh, the first one I'm going to put to, to Glenn. Glenn, um, everyone's talking about the new normal. Um, how do you think that site selection will change as we move out of COVID-19? Um, yeah, great. Sort of from the perspective of you know, development, I suppose the, the natural assumption is everyone will sort of focus on drive through sites. Um, as this is probably the, you know, the go-to, it's sort of not, not as easily just to you know, sort of acquire a drive-through site as opposed to a mall site, for example, a food court or you know, an inline store. So it will prove a bit challenging to actually you know, sort of acquire drive-through sites. Um, but, but I do think that will be sort of you know, the norm for now. Um, I think drive-through sites probably need to encompass sort of a car hop, maybe a smaller footprint, and sort of somewhere we can sort of delivery focus from the actual drive-through site. So I think sort of drive-through will be the focus, but then again, it comes to the question of you know, how long Will, you know, will the COVID-19 last? And is, it, is it a good idea to sort of jump straight in and acquire mm. 10 drive through sites as opposed to leave malls stagnant? Um, I still believe you know, the building environment would be there and malls would be required. So it's just a matter of sort of retailers making sure they make you know, informed decisions whether to focus all on drive through sites or still make sure they acquire sites within malls also. And um, mm. there's certainly going to be new malls coming out of the ground. So I think that's sort of the first jump will be for drive through and delivery hubs. Okay, because I mean, all of the, the brands that, that, that you, all three of you work for, you have quite a mix of, of mall and, uh, you know, as we say, standalone locations. Um, Everett, in terms of uh, Costa, what are they thinking from a location perspective? Um, look, I think that um, COVID has actually accelerated trends that were really already existing in the market. You know, every uh, brand around the world, including our own, was really testing the size of the footprint for each individual restaurant, um, looking at sort of layout changes uh, within the kitchen space to facilitate delivery and, uh, and those sorts of things. And I think what will happen is uh, very much um, the relationship between the landlord um, and the tenant, I think will change in the short term and then kind of go back to a sense of normal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously there is a lot of financial pressure on businesses, especially F&B businesses at the moment. So uh, I would be interested to really see, you know, how that relationship changes in the future. Some landlords have been, um, you know, more forgiving than others. Um, and I think in the short term, um, you know, there will be, uh, there will be a memory of that. And then uh, moving into the long term as new players come in, um, you know, that may change back to a sense of normality. Mm. Um, I think there will be a massive increase in selectivity, um, you know, rather than just assuming we'll go into every mall that opens. Um, you know, I think that we will select and choose the malls far more strategically than I would think that has happened in the past. Um, and then I think, um, you know, I th one thing that sort of, it probably focuses a little bit more on design. Um, but actually having dual access to uh, to locations so that a you know as we progress and move into a uh, into a slightly more delivery um sort of element to, to the business how do you um create that side of the business without interrupting or affecting um the customer when they're sitting mm -hmm. in a restaurant um and so actually being able to access um, your site from two sides with something that I think malls may have to sort of start to consider. Um, they're probably better at it in, in Dubai and the UAE than uh, elsewhere around the world. But I uh, certainly think that's something that will need to be thought of moving forward. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing worse than uh, sitting in a restaurant and having, you know, five, six aggregators waiting uh, near your table to pick up some food. So, again, like you said, I think, you know, these, some of these challenges were already there before COVID hit. 
Um, I think that it's just made people obviously react now and realize that they need to make these changes um, sooner rather than later. Um, just going on to uh, the design aspect of things. Um, there's already been some immediate changes around social distancing. I mean, um, I was actually, uh, I popped out yesterday, grabbed a coffee and on the floor, there was sort of squares leading up to the till where everyone needed to stand, making sure that people were two meters apart. Obviously, the, you know, some of the tables now have got crosses through the middle of them. So you have to sit uh, with, with, a, with a spare table in between you. Um, Longer term, how do you think the restaurant, the design of a restaurant will be affected? Um, Henry, you're with Yon Brands. Um, I know that, you know, you've been looking at the design of the, your restaurants uh, recently, but now how has that kind of changed now that COVID's hit? Yeah, I mean, um, I guess the realities of COVID have uh, uh, put a lot more focus on safety um for team members uh for customers um and so that's uh that, that's driving uh some change in uh customer behavior uh, and i think the first part is uh, you, you know we've already touched on in the site selection piece uh so the, the shift to, to more hmr um and even when it comes to i guess a dining location it, it'll have impact there uh in terms of maybe having that dining restaurant uh, be a bit more focused on uh, takeaway or even delivery. Um, and of course, with, with the safety concerns comes the, the social distancing, uh, you know, where do people wait? How do they sit? Um, you know, maybe uh, we're starting to see and install uh, things like glass barriers between cashiers and customers. Uh, we're starting to see more sanitizing stations uh, throughout the restaurant. Uh, we're starting to see uh, a shift away from e either um, menu cards or menus uh, to something more digitized. Um, and we're starting to see uh, a lot more spacing uh, between, uh, between tables. Uh, now, having said that, I, I will say that, you know, personally, my belief is that dine-in is not going away long term. People will always have the, the social desire to go out and eat. We've had it for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, I think it will come back, but in the meantime, uh, there will be certain changes that will outlive the uh, COVID, COVID uh, epidemic. Uh, you know, focusing on hygiene and safety is never a bad thing. So I, I think those things will continue uh, to move forward. Mm. In terms of experience, because these things aren't going away. Uh, you know, there are some parts of the world and and gentlemen, um, your geography span wider than, than, than the UAE. Um, if we look at Asian markets, a lot of these, um, you know, the, the, the thoughts around hygiene and has already been adopted in some of those countries for a very long time. Um, how, how do you think we're going to be able to, to, to keep that experience of, of going out for something to eat with some of these health restrictions in place? Because, you know, going to a restaurant and being served by somebody with a mask or with gloves on and so on and so forth, it will change the way somebody feels. It's, it's particularly in the, the fine dining elements. Um, what do you think companies need to be thinking about when it comes to the experience? I'll just jump in that quick. I think sort of um, just as the guys mentioned, dining will still be there. I just think as long as, you know, companies are following all the you know, local authority regulations that, you know, this will become the new norm for how long we're not sure so i don't think i think you know it sort of comes down to the individual whether they're happy to go to the mall to grab some food with the family and where that individual is just not comfortable to do that so i think time's going to tell just on the actual you know, individual as opposed to whether they're willing to you know sort of take take the risk so to speak you know to sort of sit in a restaurant and be served like that so i think it's more consumer focused you know how the guys are going to react as opposed to i think the sort of retailers will just have to adapt you know as as, as per as per regulations it's going to be the new norm Mm, yeah, I think. I mean, a, a lot, a lot of this, Greg, is going to be um, is going to move hand in hand with, uh, you know, how we progress with science and vaccines and and the whole lot. Um, and you know, we'll start to find that as we learn more about the disease, um, and, and you know, we have more solutions, uh, those will have an impact. So, like I said, I mean, I, I think we're going through a transition, a transitory phase. 
where you may have to go to a restaurant and deal with a waiter with a face mask on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I certainly don't think that that is going to be the case in, in three or four years uh, down the line. We will adapt and we will uh, find solutions as, as we always have. Yeah. And I, th and I think that a lot of the reaction is going to be regulatory. Um, you know, one of the challenges that we face, um, and I was looking at it this morning, is every country in Southeast Asia has a different set of regulations that they are putting in place for restaurants to firstly reopen um, and then secondly to operate ongoing. So, you know, as a multi-country operator, um, we not only need to create our own sort of operating procedures um, that are dedicated to us, um, but we also have to be cognizant of, you know, up to 17 different regulations that um, that are occurring in, uh, in you know, different countries uh, around the world. Mm. I mean, I was reading a report, uh, I think it was from, from JLL and they, um, that they read a report and uh, that in Italy, for example, the, the, the number one thing that people are looking forward to doing is to going back out and eating and drinking again. So, you know, that's from one of the worst hit countries uh, globally. Um, and I, I believe that it could actually help ignite the casual dining scene again. I think, you know, casual dining over the, the past couple of years has been hit significantly with the influx of delivery and aggregation that's came into the market. But, you know, naturally as human beings, we want to socialize, we want to get out there and, and, and you know, have an experience and be with friends. So I'm hoping that we actually get out there sooner rather than later. And, um, you know, if the masks have to be there, then so be it. But I, I do think people will want to get out and eat and, and spend time with friends and family for sure. Um, Going back to uh, when you sort of go into a restaurant, when you look to order, um, technology has taken um, uh, an impact on how restaurants operate over the past few years and the kind of digital age that's, that's moving forward. And I think with COVID, um, it's really challenged and tested businesses and how they can work and operate digitally. Um, but from a restaurant point of view, how do you think that the technology and the digital age is going to, I suppose, enhance um, as we come out of COVID? Um, I think that uh, I'll reiterate sort of what I said before, the digital trend existed um, before COVID. And, mm. you know, there were lots and lots of businesses that were, were looking into this space um, in order to, pr to improve the, uh, the customer journey. And I think COVID has just accelerated that mm. um, and, and probably made it more of a need um, than, than a want. So I think, you know, that obviously, you know, all of those digital issues that companies were facing in the past um, will be the same as they face in the future, you know, utilizing AI uh, for the order taking process, especially in drive throughs utilizing um, people's mobile phones as a delivery, sorry, as an order um, mechanism, whether they want it delivered or come in to pick up, um, you know, in, and, but I think that sort of moving forward, obviously, interacting with consumers on their own device rather than a device that's been placed into the um, into the restaurant is is going to be something that um, you know will potentially move forward I think however that the biggest thing for me on digital is you might get the digital element perfect but unless your delivery platforms unless your pricing platforms and unless your your sort of operating platforms to support that digital move are in place and working well, um, you know, it is going to cause a lot of problems for a lot of businesses. Mm. So I think for me, it's not just a focus on digital, although that is important and getting it right is important. What we need to make sure is that our, op our operating procedures around the other three areas um, keep up and catch mm. up. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the, the investment of it as well, really, I mean, all three of you work for global multinational restaurant groups, but if you think to some of the, you know, the smaller operators or the more family owned, where are they going to get that investment from to, to move towards that digital? Because, you know, to create an app or to bring some sort of QR ordering system in place, you know, that ultimately costs money. Um, and right now, I think, as we all know, um, restaurants are struggling. So it's going to be really interesting to see who reacts, how they react, and again, what type of innovation um, comes forward 
um, when it, in regard to ordering food. A lot of restaurants, um, and particularly in malls and food courts, they obviously introduced the self-order systems. Um, do you think they're going to be redundant now? Uh, personally, no. I think they definitely have a role to play. Um, mm. Again, you know, they'll need to be uh, to be cleaned regularly and probably after every single customer for the time being. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Henry mentioned sort of a, a pre and post vaccine environment. I think that will uh, will definitely exist. Um, and you know, things will sort of. I think cleanliness has always been important. It is now even more important, mm -hmm. um, especially um, having uh, cleanliness sort of be very visible um, in inside restaurants. Um, so I think you know the the infrastructure that's there today will still have a role to play. I still think it will be uh, utilised and expanded on. Um, but again, as restaurant operators, we need to make sure that customers are comfortable to use it and uh, whatever procedures and government regulation that um, gets put into place to make sure that that happens and you know, will something, be something that we need to focus on. Mm. Henry, earlier on, you touched on uh, HMR, home meal replacement. How, how do you think, and again, this moves away from, from property slightly, but I just kind of wanted to touch on that because it is something that everyone I'm talking to, they are thinking about how they can um, bring these, the, these, these meal replacement services in and get a bit more creative how they offer food. Um, could you talk a bit more about what Yum are, are doing in terms of meal replacement? Sure. I mean, look, for us, uh, specifically uh, at Pizza Hut, we've always been or have uh, um, sort of made the transition to a home meal replacement brand many, many years ago, uh, being a delivery uh, focused uh, system, uh, even at KFC to a large extent uh, uh, outside the U.S. Um, and that's really driven, has been driven uh, up until recently by the need for uh, convenience uh, more than anything else, um, and and the, and the, the uh, you know the the aggregators coming into the scene and really uh, making it easier and more accessible uh, to a larger number of people. Um, and so our system has always been based on an HMR uh, platform, um, and I think um, you know COVID has not created this; it's probably just accelerated it. Um, and, and you know, I'm, I'm recently getting uh, SMSs from uh, restaurants I used to frequent, yeah, you know, just to, that never did delivery before, and now they're talking about you know get that experience uh, delivered to your home. Uh, so it's just been an accelerator of a, of a trend that that's been there. Mm. Glenn, from your side, is this something that Hardy's are looking at as well? And home replacement, yeah, I think it's been discussed to be honest with you. I'm not sure how, sure how far it's actually progressed. Mm. I've seen a lot of guys in the market now, sort of some new starts actually, sort of new start restaurants sort of focusing on this. But you know, the longevity of a new start, you know, with regards to operation stuff, I'm not so sure. So I've sort of seen it come in the market with different new starts. And as we say, you know, companies that don't normally deliver to home replacement sort of, you know, adapting this. But um, the longevity, you know, with regards to the operations, I'm not too sure how long, you know, it's, you know the, the future looks, how the future looks for them. Okay. Um, I suppose to kind of close off then, and, and this is not a, a question that we've uh, we've touched on yet. But if if I was a if I was a new restaurateur and I had the I suppose the the bravery to come out and 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 open up a new concept over the next few weeks, as professionals in the real estate and development space, what would your advice be to somebody that's now potentially looking at opening a restaurant or, you know, he may have signed a lease um, and is slightly confused about what to do. What advice would you give that, those people? I'll open that up but to the group. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Um, in every crisis, there's opportunity. Um, this is no different and, and for the restaurant business, no different. Uh, there are, there, there's going to be and already is a massive shakeout from a real estate perspective with uh, concepts uh, going under. So there will be some great uh, bargains to be had. And if you fast forward five years, uh, it's one of those scenarios where you might look back and say, well, I wish I did back then, uh, but I didn't. So there will be uh, bargains to be had. Um, I think uh, you know, if you're trying to get into the business now, uh, you really need to uh, study and understand what's motivating people and what's driving people and to have a sort of a, a stopgap plan to get you through the next 
12 to 18 months before normalcy sets back and whatever comes with normalcy as far as running that restaurant. Uh, but, you know, certainly it's not a time to, uh, you know, cur curl back uh, and, and shy away from making these investment decisions uh, as long as you take reality into consideration. Mm. Yeah. And, and I think that, um, you know, my advice would be uh, is to just really challenge the traditional business model. Um, you know, a, a business model of 30% food, 30% labor, 30% rent and utilities and all of those sorts of things. Um, my advice would be really, really um, have a look at the digital space to lower the labor requirements that, that, an exec, you know, that a, restaurant, uh, a restaurant has. You know, maybe the digital element is the centerpiece of, of your offering and, uh, and the stores are, uh, are secondary. Those kinds of things just to really throw the whole um, concept on its head. Mm. Just yeah, just as just as the guys mentioned, I think as um, Emmy mentioned, with regards to um, so, so it will be sites, you know, real estate sites that will become available. But maybe back in the past, it would have been for your your A, your A plus tenant, but now with opportunities and obviously a big oversupply in malls, and you know, there may be an opportunity for a new business to take a key site that maybe today we might think is not a key site, but say six months down the line, should we have a vaccine? Should this pass? You know, it could be it could it could end up being a key prime site. So. It's sort of as as the guy said, it needs to be reevaluated and just sort of really researched in depth with regards to digital acceptor because um, certainly certainly risky, but at the same time there's going to be opportunity. Mm. Good. Okay. Well, look. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, we we like to try and keep these uh, short and to the point so that people stay engaged and listening to all the content. Um, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, stay safe, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again very soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.